Welcome back to Science Click. Today, anechoic rooms. The air that makes up our atmosphere is made of molecules, mainly nitrogen and oxygen. When an object vibrates, it displaces these molecules which push against each other, forming a wave that travels through space. This is called a sound. What happens then when a sound wave hits an obstacle? The vibrating air molecules try to push the molecules of the obstacle. But these are strongly linked together, the obstacle is solid, it is difficult to make them vibrate. As if they were attached with springs, the molecules of the obstacle resist and push back against the molecules in the air. Part of the wave still manages to cross the obstacle and propagates beyond it. But another part of the wave is pushed back, reflected. It's what we call an echo. On Earth, sound waves are omnipresent. Music, communications, transport, whether we like it or not, our environment is a mixture of sounds which overlap and bounce everywhere around us. Imagine a musician playing the guitar in a concert hall. The music spreads in all directions and reaches the ears of the public. But the sound bounces off the walls multiple times and all these echoes are also received by the audience. The initial sound of the guitar is mixed with all these waves. We call this reverberation. This is what distinguishes the ambience of a church from that of a small apartment. Now imagine that, for a scientific purpose, we want to analyse the sound radiated by an object. For example, the sound produced by a speaker. In this case, the reflections are a problem. They disturb the signal we'd like to measure. To isolate the raw sound emitted by the speaker, we would need to create a very quiet and empty room, one which doesn't produce any echo. An anechoic room. In this video, we will try to build an anechoic room step by step. To begin with, let's try to make the room perfectly silent. Initially, the room is not silent. Our computer produces a little noise, for instance. A first improvement would be to move the measuring equipment to another room to prevent it from being heard. It will serve as a control room. Despite this, the room is still not silent. Other noises come from outside. Cars, passers-by, airplanes. To get rid of them, we'll rebuild the walls with very thick concrete that makes it hard for sound waves to pass through and we'll add a layer of sound insulator, a very efficient material for absorbing sound waves. The presence of trucks or trains passing by also causes vibrations which are transmitted into our room. To isolate it from these vibrations, we'll raise the structure and place it on anti-vibration mounts, large damped springs intended to mitigate vibrations. Finally, we build a second box all around the room to finish the isolation. This layer is particularly helpful to insulate the room from the outside temperature. Sound travels faster in warm air because molecules are more agitated. If we imagine a warm summer day, the edges of the room would heat up compared to the centre, and sound waves would propagate differently there. By insulating the room, we make sure that the temperature stays uniform and that the waves move evenly at every point. At this stage, our room is very quiet. We have successfully isolated it from all external disturbances. But there is still one problem. Sound waves are reflected off the walls and blur the sound we want to measure. To solve this last problem, we will raise the speaker to the centre of the room and cover all the walls with hundreds of wedges. These are triangular objects made from a porous material, ideal for absorbing sound. When a wave hits the material, all these zigzags increase the surface available to absorb it. The wave bounces multiple times, 
trapped within these structures and dissipates more and more at each bounce. We've now built an anechoic room. Unlike in a normal room, sound propagates freely in all directions, without any obstacle to bounce on, as if the room were infinitely large. At the Laboratory of Mechanics and Acoustics of Marseille in France, acoustics experts have unique equipment, a complex of three large anechoic rooms with exceptional performance, each configured for different applications. The first room is dedicated to auditory perception. Here, researchers study the human auditory system. This room is specifically designed to place a person or a mannequin with ear microphones at the centre of the volume, perfectly isolated from the outside. Researchers study the intelligibility of speech, or our perception of sound in three dimensions. They also try to characterise our experience in terms of preferences or discomfort while hearing certain sounds. A related research topic explores our perception of sound intensity, or pitch. This work allows us to better understand how our auditory system works. The second room of the laboratory is semi-anechoic. The ground is not absorbent, so sound can bounce off it. This configuration is more convenient for some research applications and for industrials. It can host large objects, such as a car or a washing machine, to measure the intensity of the noise they produce in order to assess their performance or their compliance to noise pollution rules. These products are usually placed on the ground and it is therefore relevant to factor in the reflections of the waves as they also contribute to the total sound a user will hear. Under the room, a booth communicates through a hatch and can host a speaker to measure how sound passes through an object. It can be used, for instance, to determine if a material is a good acoustic insulant. Finally, the third room, the largest one, is mainly dedicated to fundamental research and is currently aiming at developing a world premiere system. When we hear a sound, it is composed of several frequencies, vibrating from 20 to 20,000 times per second. High frequencies correspond to high pitch, and low frequencies to low pitch. But the lower the sound, the longer its wavelength. And below 100 vibrations per second, the wavelength exceeds several meters, and the wedges are then too small in comparison, they cannot trap the sound wave. The lowest sounds bounce off the walls, as in an ordinary room. To overcome this, and create a room that would be anechoic even for low frequencies, LMA researchers are developing a system that would be the first of its kind. The idea is to combine the absorbent coating of the walls with 64 speakers and 128 microphones acting in real time to cancel the echoes of low frequencies. When a low sound bounces against a wall, it is detected by the microphones which immediately inform the speakers to produce an identical wave, but of opposite sign. The waves that the room fails to absorb are controlled in real time, and we cancel them by adding new, opposed waves. This is called active control. The same principle is used in noise-cancelling headphones. If air molecules vibrate in one direction, the speakers immediately react and push back to cancel their vibration. This very ambitious project, which will resonate on an international scale, is currently under development. The room is already wired up to accommodate this system and the researchers have had promising breakthroughs. There is good hope of achieving a world premiere. To summarise, an anechoic room fulfils two functions. It creates a silent space, isolated from the outside, and minimises the reflection of sound off its walls. It is crucial equipment for experts. 
there are also analogous devices for studying electromagnetic waves. The three rooms of the Laboratory of Mechanics and Acoustics of Marseille offer insights around multiple questions. Scientific ones, we study the radiation of complex sound sources, such as musical instruments, but also the human auditory system and our perception of sound. Technical ones, we characterize the sound radiated by industrial objects or the acoustic transparency of innovative materials. And finally, public health issues, as we evaluate disturbances and noise pollution, or even look to improve the performance of cochlear implants intended for people with deafness. Contrary to what is sometimes thought, it is possible to stay inside these rooms for several hours without any problem. Scientists do so during their experiments. However, some people can feel disturbed by this almost absolute silence. To conclude, the LMA is currently developing a system that will be unique in the world, a hybrid anechoic room equipped with an active control system, in the hope of studying low-frequency sources in real time something which has remained impossible until now. This video was produced in partnership with Ecoscience Provence-Alpes-Côte d'Azur as part of the Vidéo Ecoscientifique project. It was written in collaboration with the Laboratory of Mechanics and Acoustics of Marseille under the scientific advice of Cédric Pined. Find out more about the LMA's anechoic rooms on the Ecoscience YouTube channel.